All right, in this part of today's video, we're gonna tackle a chain guard. This is a chain guard that I pulled off of like a uh, CT70 clone frame that I had. And I don't typically use these. And so I grabbed it. And I'm thinking that maybe we might be able to utilize this back bracket. The chain guard on mounts here and here. So maybe we can use this. That, that gives me about the right length I'm looking for. I might want it a little higher. We might have to tweak this a little bit. But obviously, we've got to do something here. Um, you know what? I think... Let me reach across there. I think maybe I'm going to put a, just a screw in there real quick. Just to kind of hold that in place. That way I don't have to hold it by hand. Okay, I apologize for getting my big body in your way here. But I think... <laughs> Draw a straight line, Mike. Holy cow. It's going to look silly having that hole there. But I don't want to whittle away to... I want, I want to sneak up on this. So we're going to cut, cut that off, and I'm going to use a cut-off wheel in my angle grinder, but I apologize, it wasn't set up and I've got the wrong, I've got the sanding disc and not the cut-off wheel. Well, I'm struggling. Okay. There we go. I think maybe I'm going to point you guys down just a little bit. Right, we've got a, a little lip on the back that is not allowing it to okay hang on just a second I've got on the back side here we've got got to get rid of some material I think I just need to get, I need to get rid of this. I'm going to cut this.
We're still too long up here. It's resting. All right, what do I want to do? I'm just going to cut it across there. Let's see what happens. Getting closer. Now, obviously, we can't have that that close because as this cycles, it'll it'll kick this down. So we've got to. I cut it pretty close, but we're going to have to actually clearance that a little bit. But I like where we're going. I think this little spot right here. We can take a, uh, a hammer and dolly and flatten that out. We can't get that to fit inside there. No. No, I think we're just going to uh, need to just give it a... We're just going to need to give it some clearance, I think. Try that. bracket underneath there a little thicker come on break off hopefully we didn't go too far I think I might stop there, uh, but we need to weld on a washer or something here to obviously give it another spot to mount, but I'm, I think I like the way that looks. All right, so I'm going to shut you off for a second. I'm going to actually take a hammer and see if I can't uh, flatten See if I can't flatten down that spot, and then we'll find a piece that we can weld on here and see what that's going to look like. All right, I'm a little perplexed on what to do next. I put more of a dog leg in this bracket <clears throat> because the chain guard was actually hitting the back side of this shock. Uh, so this is just about perfect. We cleared the shock. Not, I mean, it's going to move with the shock, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but it centers it, it centers the chain guard over top of the chain, which is good. So if, I'm happy here. Now up here, and you can tell I've drawn a line. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, the chain guard is a little close to the chain. 
there. I'm actually pushed up against the chain, so I do need to bring it back some. So I don't know if I want to cut that out. I don't want to get rid of this mount because I want to leave the original mounts in case you know somebody ever puts an original chain guard back on it. Or do I try and hammer that out? You know, like this spot. I wish that spot would have been right there. Uh, I probably should have used that here and then remove this piece, but oh well. It's been done now, so. I think first what I'm gonna do is take this back off and I'm gonna try and word that little spot right there where I've got it, uh, the line drawn, maybe try and bubble that out so it slides over top of that. But see then, you know, where it's at now, that pushes it out too far. I need it, yeah. Let me see what I can do. So just so you guys know what I'm doing, uh, I've got a piece of pipe in my vise and I've laid that the chain guard over top of it and then I'm taking the ball peen hammer the rounded end and just hammering down and trying to create that little bump so keep working on it well here is my oh kick the stand sorry that's shaking. Kick it again. So I bubbled that out and I welded a washer onto the back side. Let's see what it looks like. I think it's going to be good enough for me anyway. And like I said, I may have to wind up clearancing right here some more once I get <clears throat> weight on the swing arm, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm going to go with it. Let's move on to something else. All right, so the other item I want to work on in this video is this front fender like this bike was missing the front fender this is a fender off of a CT 70 uh, obviously we have it's too long we have some clearance issues huh you know no that's not gonna work right because then we'll have the then we'll have that hole in front there no I don't want that okay I was going to see if I could turn it around and cut off this end and get rid of those two holes, but then I've got this exposed, which I don't necessarily want either, so. I really don't know how much to cut off. I've done this before. but I didn't like keep any notes or anything. So, I don't know. Let's try something like that. Now, before we cut that, I, I want to apologize earlier in the video when I was working on the chain guard and using my cutoff tool, I did not wear my proper safety gear, uh, which is actually is kind of surprising. I, I typically do not use that piece of equipment right there without at least eye protection on, and, and I didn't have any when I worked on the chain guard and, and uh, don't follow my lead guys. That was actually kind of a stupid move. At, at one point in the video, you see me kind of flinch because 
uh, a piece did hit me in the uh, in the forehead or, or something. Uh, so anyway, so I'm gonna shut you off for a second. I'm gonna get some safety goggles before we cut that fender off. I said safety goggles, but I typically wear a full shield made by Uvex. gets us close we will uh, put the sanding the flap disc on it and make the final adjustments so the pattern on the uh, CT70 fender is too wide for that also so I need to if I can reach in there with a marker and mark where I need the holes or if I'm going to need to uh, you're not even really looking at that what I was saying is the the holes that are in the CT70 fender for where it mounts are wider than the holes here for the uh, for the Z50 Hang on, I'm going to get in front of the camera here, sorry. Just trying to see if I, which way I need to go to be somewhat centered. I think right in there. Okay, so I'm going to go off camera. I'm actually measure that distance and kind of use the hole that I somewhat marked, put that on there, get it centered on the fender and get those holes drilled. And then I'll bring you back. Well, what do you think? I still need to clean it up back here, but I've got it bolted in place. Yeah, it's, it's close enough to being centered. Got two fenders on it now. I'm gonna take it off and uh, clean it up for one last time. And that's the front fender on for the final time. I even went ahead and welded up those couple holes that were in that fender. Kind of smoothed off the, the back end. So I think it's going to be good enough. Piece by piece, little by little, we're chipping away at this thing. So we will continue to work on it. All right, everybody. We are a few days down the road from previous parts of this video you just saw. And I got digging through some of my stash of stuff this weekend, and I found a seat cover that I had no idea I had. You can tell I've had it for a while. It's dusty, it's dirty. Uh, it might be for a hardtail Z50 seat and not one of these, but I don't really care. We're gonna see if we can get it to go on there. Now, I probably should have cut new foam and done all that, but not going to. We're just going to uh, get this old off of here and and put the new one on, see if it, see what happens. If I need to take it back off and fill up, fill in some spots with some foam or whatever, I will. But 
I'm gonna take a few minutes and I'm actually going to try and I don't think it's gonna happen, but I'm actually gonna try and salvage the little rivets that are on the side. I would be shocked if these things don't, if they come out without breaking the little pins off of them. But that, I'm gonna try and salvage as many of these as I can. I don't know why, they're all rusty, they're not chrome, but oh well. So I'm gonna go around and work on that. Uh, get those out of there, get this old seat, what's left of the seat cover off of this thing. Well, after getting that all off of there, boy, this seat is rough. It's rusty, crusty. I couldn't save any. That, that one rivet you saw me get out was about the only one I could save. Unfortunately, I don't have another seat. So, for right now, until we revisit this bike or do something else, we're going to see if this one fits it. You know what? That's gonna that's gonna look a hell of a lot better than what we had. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you with it. I have uh, went through and all the little tines that are left. I've straightened those out the best I could. There's a few of them left, and you just basically just poke the the cover through it and then that gets folded down and, and holds it in place so we're going to go through and see how well we can hold that cover on well it may not get much more redneck than this but <clears throat> i got the uh cover on all those little tabs especially on the sides were pretty much gone the rivets we couldn't save there weren't enough tabs to hold the, the cover on so uh, I drilled a few holes. I put some stainless screws in, stainless bolts in, used a fender washer on the back side, kind of sandwiched it. We have a seat. Let's give the seat the mini bike mic treatment. Now I don't have it all the way bolted down yet because we, you know, have to take it back off, put the tank on. But what do you say? Oh, good as new. All right, so we are now a few more days down the road, and we're ready to work on this bike again. And the next thing that I want to look at is the exhaust. And I have decided that this is just beat. I'm not sure what all's in there that's loose. Uh, it's all rusted apart. It's been patched bad. It's still got a bunch of holes in it. So rather than use that, I think we're gonna build our own. So I have assembled a few parts here uh, I've got a head tube pipe that I believe is probably off a CT70. Uh, I've got a length of one inch OD 063 wall tubing. It's the tube that I cut into little pieces to uh, repair the broken pipe uh, on a Trail 70. Uh, but I've got a length of it here that it slides right over top of that so we can weld that um, I picked up about a year ago my local tractor store 
was had a bunch of, of uh, lawnmower mufflers on clearance. Got rid of them for like, I can't remember, $1.50 or $2 a muffler. Uh, and so I picked up oh, half a dozen of each of these, the two sizes that they had. Not really sure which one I'm going to go with yet. I think the bigger one. Um, I've also picked up a couple shields that I have. Both of them off a uh, CT70. This is a K0 shield. I think I'm going to go with that because it is uh, narrower here than the K1 and later shield. They're just they're a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with with this. Uh, I'm going to keep this end that has the clamp. That can clamp around the pipe it'll come up it's got two spots so we may have to tack uh, some nuts or something to the muffler and then I'll probably cut it off round it here all right and then the last thing is I have a an old handlebar it's like off of a clone CT 70 or Z50, uh, and I've already cut a piece off of it for something else. Uh, it matches the same diameter as the exhaust, but the reason I, I picked this up is because of this bend. I think I can cut it off here during a, at the straight part, and then it will come out and actually curve around right in that little cutout spot, just kind of like the original exhaust did. So that's my plan. This will be the, the little tailpipe. I'll have a section of this in there with a muffler somewhere in between. That actually looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna go with the bigger one. Yeah, so I'll probably go with the bigger muffler. That fits the uh, diameter of the shield a little bit better than this small one does. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and take a minute, bolt this in place, put this on. We'll take some measurements uh, and so forth, but let me, let me kind of get this in place. That'll take me a second to put the collars and so forth in there and get it on, and then I will bring it back in just a second. So I've got the head tube bolted on. Uh, I don't have it tight. I've got it so I can, I can move it around. I went ahead and cut off the uh, excess of that handlebar that I had left and I tacked it to the muffler. So now I'm ready to get a measurement on this other piece of tube. Okay, so what do we want? Maybe stick out about like that? Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's going to have, my tube and this are about the same diameter, so I'm gonna to have to butt weld it there, but my tube will slip over top of this so I'm gonna have, you know, a half inch of play or something. So if I go seven inches, that should be, that should be plenty. All right, so we're going to go take this tube and chop off a seven inch piece and then tack it to the end of our muffler and then we'll see how that all fits so let me get that done I'll be right back well let's see what this looks like I got a piece tacked to our muffler this should slide right over there we go We 
you still got to come off. I'll have to get a little piece of steel and make a little bracket to come off to hold this tight. But I think that looks okay. I, I like that little kick out. That should be, you know, behind the seat. Do I turn it down more? I don't know what the original looked like. Maybe turn it down like that. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna shut you off one more time. Again, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna tack that, get it in place. I may go ahead and, and uh, find a little piece of steel and get this fabricated and tacked together. And then I will bring you back when we are ready to tackle the shield. And see what we can do there. So, all right, so I'm gonna attach this permanently. Well, not permanently, I'm just gonna put some tacks. We'll do a finish weld in a little bit. Let's get it tacked together, hold it to where we want, and let's, uh, I'm gonna make a little mount right here, and then I'll bring you guys back. So all I've done here, guys, is just taken a piece of flat steel. In this case, it's uh, eighth inch. Come on, folks, an eighth inch thick, three quarters of an inch wide. I put a little dog leg on it to uh, bring it out away from the frame and get closer to the pipe. Now, obviously, it's way too long. We're going to uh, bolt it on, see how it sits. Uh, we may tack it in place, take the entire exhaust off, and then we can uh, cut the excess off on the back. Oh, that, that looks pretty good. That looks good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take and, and tack weld um, the muffler and the pipe to that bracket. Then we'll unbolt it, come back here, cut it off and, and weld it up and I should be good. So let me, uh, let's do that real quick. Let's... Oh, might be shaking you. Hang on, I gotta get my welder a little closer. <laughs> I burnt through the muffler a little bit, but I think I got it covered back up. All right, we'll have to uh, we'll have to check that out after we start it up. Okay, so make sure you guys are still kind of looking in the general vicinity. You are. I had a marker. So we want to go somewhere around there, and I want to go to the end of the muffler. I think for right now we're going to cut this off here. See what we can't do there. I'm sure somebody's going, oh my god, you're gonna cut a a uh, guard off of a K0. And, oh well, we've got I got a few more. So all right, going to go back. My cutter's back in the other shop. Gonna go cut snip snip, clean that up. Uh may take a second and kind of hammer this and kind of clean, you know, straighten it up a little bit. It's not too straight. So I will be right back. So I've got the exhaust all buttoned up, all solid welded, put on there, good and sturdy. 
<laughs> I might I might have turned it a little too much. I might have a it might vibrate on this fender. I'm not sure. I might have to put a little dimple in that fender because I, I messed up and got it clocked too far down. Anyway, minor issue. We'll we'll fix it if we need to be. So <clears throat> I've cut a uh, I cut that guard down. And I'm thinking something along that lines, along that line right there. So what I'm going to have to do is try and weld a couple nuts right there, but then I can stick a short bolt in to hold that. This side, the front has the clamp that goes around it, so that'll be good. So I'm gonna have to turn my welder way down because this, this muffler is not very thick. I, I had to patch a little hole right there where I blew, blew had turned up too high and blew through it, so. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna see what happens. Let's turn this down a little bit. So I'll let y'all leave, leave it roll, let you guys, let you see it. If I mess it up, we'll mess it up together. I'm gonna put a, uh, put a longer Let's see, I'm gonna put a longer bolt in, in this nut so I can hold it and not burn my fingers. Excuse me. Okay. What I'm trying to do is start the arc on the nut, which is thicker, so I'm not worried about burning through it, and then try and fade it over into the thinner sheet metal. That's that's how I do it anyway. Not saying that's right. Sorry, I'm gonna be in your way. Okay, you get the idea. I'm gonna do that to the other one, and then when I get ready to bolt the uh, shield on there, I'll bring you back. It's definitely not pretty by any stretch but i think i have them on there now let's see if i've got them i, I it looks like i got them cockeyed a, a little bit here i don't know i might have to no you know what we might actually get that to work i'm gonna have to grind a little bit off the off the bolt it's not a it's not a very long. Come on. Not a very long bolt, but still yet. It... Oh, stay on there. Let's 
still a little warm. Yeah, I'm going to have, I'm, I'm going to need to oblong the, the, I got the bolts, I got the nuts a little too far spread. I can see the hole, but I cannot get, I'm going to have to open that up just a little bit. Now I'm using a, a bolt that has a shouldered head on it, so I can go considerably bigger and it's not going to be a big deal. I don't. It shouldn't make any difference which one I put in first. I wonder, you know what, I wonder if I can take some of the curvature out of the, uh, the shield and get it to work. Well, I can, but we may open that up, but there you go. I know it's kind of hard to tell with the with no seat and no tank on it yet. <laughs> but that's what we're going to go with. Uh, and no, you're not going to hear it run yet. I haven't heard it run yet either with this muffler. We'll do that after we, we'll start it when we get the tank and the seat done. So guys, I think we're down to one last item. And then we'll call this bike done. And that is... Uh, fixing that gas tank. I'm going to take just a second. I got to cut some um, uh, exhaust muffler wrap, exhaust wrap to fill up the gap so this thing doesn't, so this doesn't rattle. Uh, I wrapped the pipe with some exhaust uh, header wrap. That's what I'm looking for, the term I'm looking for, header wrap. I'm going to wrap that, put that on there, and I will secure these two bolts I'll do that off camera and uh, we will call the exhaust done. When I bring you back, we'll take a look at this gas tank and see what we have to do. All right, just to uh, for continuity and, and so forth and make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, the next segment that you're gonna see uh, is on this gas tank. And a lot of it was filmed uh, maybe almost two weeks ago when I cut the bottom of this tank out and re-welded this in. Uh, so you're going to see footage of, of me doing that. And then when I, it'll come back to today where I'm working on it. And what I need to finish up is I need to drill the hole for the petcock and weld the, the little bong thing on there for that. And then I don't know if it's showing up in the video, but there are four pinholes in uh here in the tunnel and it is so thin i'm not even going to attempt to weld that i'm just going to mix up some some jb weld and cover those holes and and call it done because this this tank is just obviously it's you know it, it if it works that it'll be a miracle but uh it seems to hold water except for where those holes are but anyway so the next section you'll watch me uh working on that tank and then uh, when you know when it comes back to the JB weld that's that's current today a couple pin holes or actually they're bigger than pin holes I've got a couple rotted holes here uh, I want to get the tank off uh, flip it over assess it a little bit better to see what it is we have to do to hopefully uh, salvage this tank now this is not a restore this is a uh, revive so I'm not going to be painting the tank or doing anything different with the decals. Um, oh boy, we've got a little bit worse than what I had anticipated, but we're going to see if we can fix it. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me set that down and get the camera. I knew I had these couple holes here. I did not know that we were going to find the rot here. So we may, we just may slice this thing, basically take a cut down through here. 
and one on the inside. Get rid of everything in between. Kind of go around that cock, go around that, come up here to where I think it feels good, and then cut this, cut it off, and and instead of having this this piece that sticks up here, it'll just be flat all the way across. Yeah, uh, let's take a look. Sounds like I've got some junk inside the tank also. Let's see what we can, what we got. Well, oh boy, we've got some, we got some rust. Oh, I see, uh, hadn't seen it. We've got a repair spot right here too. Okay, a lot of that will come out once I cut the, uh, A lot of rust that is going to be thin through there i think this side might be okay nope <laughs> i just poked a hole in it right there too so it's pretty thin on this side also so we're going to have to do uh, a little bit of work on both sides so get rid of that old mud wasp nest all right so let me get some tools we're going to get set up and we are going to slice open we'll probably take the pet cock off first see what happens i'm seeing a little bit of something right here i'm hoping that it's yeah boy it's even rotted around the pet cock right there yeah we're gonna we're gonna have to see what we can do to fix it because uh i really want to use this tank on this bike All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna use a couple different angle grinders, one with a 40 thousandths uh, inch thick cutoff wheel, and then we've got another one set up with just a, uh, a flap disc sanding disc. And so we're gonna use the cutoff wheel to hopefully cut out the bad damage. Use the sanding wheel to kind of take off the paint, get down to some bare metal. That will help expose any bad edges we have also. Oh, I forgot to take the uh, pet cock off. Give me a second. I gotta get a wrench big enough to do that. My eyes aren't working with me today. There we go. Let's see what happens. Let's take that off that out of our way all right I've got my protective gear some eye protection and some hand protection all right so I may wind up fast forwarding through this or editing out some of this so it doesn't bore you too long but essentially I'm just going to make a cut up through here, do the same thing on this side, maybe try and get past that without messing up any threads, and then cutting that off, so. It's thin. The more I cut, the more I expose. I'm gonna have to go. Uh, I'm gonna have to go a little bit higher. Hopefully, you guys are can see that. <clears throat> All 
See what we let's see what we got over here on this side. We, we know we got a hole right there. Probably wasn't showing up on film, but the more I cut and the more the, the, the tool vibrated, the more pinholes, the more pinholes started showing up. Yeah, it's pretty rusty in there. A lot rustier than what I thought it was. Dude, we have a spot right there. We still have, we've still got another spot up here. Yeah. All right, I'm going to shut you down. You, you probably watched enough. And I'll continue to get this uh, to where I want it. And then when I'm ready to cut some pieces to weld back in, I'll bring you back. Well, that escalated rather quickly and rather ugly. We had a lot more rot than what I anticipated. And I wound up cutting out quite a bit of the bottom on both sides. I think we're to good metal now. Uh, I wound up having to actually cut the pet cock. It was just so rotted, so we're gonna just no, that's not a pinhole there, too, is it? Uh-oh, we might be in trouble, guys. Hang on just a second. I just saw another, another spot. Oh, it is. Oh, my goodness, this tank is... Wow. Well, you know what? We'll have to, uh, we've got a couple more little spots down inside there. They're going to show up on camera. Where am I looking at? Right. Focus. Right there. Yep, yep, you can see the, see, yep, see them? Take the. You know what? We're going to uh, concentrate on the sides see if we can get that put back together and then we'll uh, we'll worry about we'll worry about those in a bit you know we might be able just to 
throw some JB Weld or something on those. Or yeah, we've got it's pretty thin right through there too. So oh well. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, see if I can cut some sheet metal to match these contours that we can weld that back in. So I've got a template made for the first side. I just had to tape a couple pieces of paper together and using my dirty hands to go through and just kind of push and create a, a dirt line that I could can cut out. So we're gonna try and cut um, Got some sheet metal, and we're going to try and trace around that and see if we can't get that cut out of that piece of sheet metal and then put on there. Okay, so there's the first piece cut out. Uh, and I just used the angle grinder with the cutoff wheel and the flap disc to get that. So we'll have to start at one end and start welding it and pushing it down and tacking it and get it all tacked all the way around and then you know do a, a final weld. No, I'm not a trained sheet metal fabricator at all. I'm just a guy that bought a, uh, a welder and some tools and just started kind of trying to figure it out. and. You know, no, it's not going to look like a professional did it because I'm not a professional. But, you know, all I'm trying to do is, is get it to where it does not leak fuel. So if we can accomplish that, I will be happy. So I'm going to take that in and uh, see if I can't tack it in. You know, use the welder. The welder's over in the other shop in the other part of the building. So uh, I'm going to take that over and massage that a little bit. See if I can't get it to go in there and then I'll bring you back. All right, so now I think before I do the JB Weld in here, because that'll take some time to dry, I think I'll go ahead and drill the hole for the uh, where the petcock goes and get that welded in, and then we can JB Weld. And then actually the petcock seems to be plugged. I think we're going to have to pull it apart. But So I've got a drill bit that is roughly the same diameter as the inside. So we're just gonna drill a hole here somewhere. Something to that nature. And we're gonna set that on there and give her a little zap zap around. Uh, I do need to get the welder. Let me get this scooted around here, wasn't prepared, apologize. We need a welding helmet. We're gonna need to ground the tank somehow, some way. Well, come on, Mike. It's uh, kind of tough on a curved, you know, the, the tank has got that curvature to it. There we go. Let's try that. Uh, I didn't get a pair of, uh, probably need to get a little pair of needle nose to hold that.
That works for me. And the, that will screw onto there, but we've got to take this apart. So I think before I do that, before I take the pet cock apart, because yeah, it seems to be plug, plug, plug. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some JB Weld and get on these spots so that we can be letting that set up. While the JB Weld is setting up, we have a couple other things to kind of take a look at. And we in the shot. One of them is this pet cock. I'm a little worried about taking it apart. I don't want to create more problems than I'm solving, but it doesn't work. I mean, it's it's completely plugged right now. So, I mean, we, I guess we can't tear it up any worse than what it's already torn up. Okay, so we're getting, I need to, I didn't grab a, uh, a pick. Hang on a second. So we're getting flow out the bottom up to to the hole but one of these other holes there it is that one's plugged this one up here This filter part is plugged. Oh, I hate to pull that out of there. I'm just afraid that it, you know what, it's already disintegrating. Yeah, we weren't going to get anything through that. Yeah, she plugged tight. The rust. Yeah, I think we got it now. You know what else I forgot? My favorite spray. Got the WD-40, didn't we? Now we've got flow. There we go. Not that that's doing a whole lot. There still is a little bit of a filter on that. Yeah, I think that's the way it goes.
Okay. It doesn't shut it off completely, but that's okay. I think that's how that works, yeah. Okay. All right, so now it's just a waiting game. We have to wait for that uh, JB Weld to set up. Oh, you know what? We, we've got one other thing that we can work on before we put that tank on while we're letting it set up. And that is the little tank uh, isolators, insulator things right here that uh, they're supposed to be rubber. Uh, they fit on little pegs on the side of the frame and then these fit over top of them and keep the tank from moving around. Well, I don't have them. Uh, they weren't, you know, this, if you remember right, this, this tank or this bike had just an inner tube wrapped around the frame and that was what was kind of keeping it from bouncing around. So we've got to come up with something to, to make those. So let me look around the shop. I've looked high and low and I don't have anything rubber that will fit here to make those out of. And I can order them, but uh, I'm not on this bike, I'm not gonna do that. But what I found was an old pool cue. And I've cut this off. I made a trophy for uh, a neighborhood pool league, I guess. I'm not really sure what it was called. Anyway, I, I made a trophy and I needed a short end uh, of a pool cue. So I went to Walmart or someplace and I spent $7.86 and I bought a, uh, oh, it was a one piece shorty. It was only a 48 inch pool cue to begin with. Anyway, it looks to be pretty close to the right size to fit in there. So you know what? I'm gonna cut off a couple short slices of this, drill a little hole in the end because they fit over that pin right there. I've gotta have the camera looking at. So I've gotta fit that over that little pin. Let me go knock that out. I really have no idea how thick those are supposed to be. I made these about three eighths of an inch. We will drill in a three sixteenths hole trying to center it. Uh, I need to go a little bit bigger. 3 is not big enough, just if you, if you need to know if you've got a uh, pull cue and you're going to make some <laughs> things for a tank. <laughs> What's this? Uh, 7.30 seconds, maybe? Let's see if this is any better. I don't want to, I mean, I want it to be tight, but I don't want to tap it. I'll just split the, I'll split the wood, I think. All right. No, we're going to have to creep up on it. We're, we're not quite big enough yet. Yeah. What do you think? Just go quarter inch and be done with it. Let's, let's try quarter inch. Thought I could hold it by hand, I can't. Oh, and I broke it. Yep, I smashed it. That didn't work. And this may not work, I don't know. Get in the middle, Mike. Oh. 
I probably shouldn't have drilled the hole all the way through. What do you think? There we go. Feels like I need to go a little deeper. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have smashed it or broken it if I hadn't drilled the hole all the way through. Okay. Oh, I was gonna try and use it, but now it, it did break all apart. All right, I gotta shut you off. I gotta, I gotta cut another one real quick. Well, I've got them on both sides now. Let's uh, see if we can find the tank and give that a whirl. See what happens. Oh. Stupid me, I just put my hand in the JB weld and it wasn't quite dry yet. Oh well. I think we're okay. I think I just caught the edge and Yeah, we're fine. Alright, where are those at? Uh oh, <laughs> did I break it? Either it went on or I broke it. Let's find out. Did I break it or did it go on? I broke it. Crap. Same one over here. You know, as you uh, go farther down on the pool, pool cue, the thing gets a little bit bigger diameter. Dang on it. Thought I had something there, fellas, but maybe I need to figure out a different. Maybe I need to figure out something better than that. You know what? I think if I can get it, I think it'll be uh, pretty good. All right. We're going to try it one more time. Third time to charm. Well, guys, I think we are ready to put a wrap on this little bike. Here it is all put back together. Here's a look at the exhaust and that shield that I made. The seat on it that we covered. The tank. Tail light fender that we welded and tried to fix the chain guard I still don't have a, uh, a side cover I don't I don't have one I thought about maybe trying to make one but this video's gotten long enough I think it's it's time to, to move on we got the uh, the fender on it the only thing I uh, we're gonna do before we fire it up I did receive a package and I got some bar knobs from David Richard over at Mike's Mini Trails. Uh, no, we are not related nor affiliated in any way, shape, or form. We just happen to share the same name, Mike, uh, his business, and, and me. So uh, he posted that he had some knobs knobs he was getting rid of and so i contacted him and said hey dude i need uh i'm gonna need some knobs so i'm gonna change that other one and then we are going to grab that can of gas over there we're gonna see what kind of leaks we have and uh i i know it's going to leak don't don't get me wrong i i don't have any uh <laughs> you know i i know it's gonna leak so let's see uh let me get the knob on let's put some gas in it let's fire it up and see what this thing sounds like I'm really just hoping that it just doesn't completely pour out of the tank. Uh, I fully expect it to seep and maybe drip. Uh, 
Come on, get the air out of there. Put some gas in it. I haven't seen anything yet, have you? Oh, Petcock actually works. I believe we've got, that's probably enough. I'll call it enough. I think I saw gas flow down through the line. Well, I haven't started this in a couple weeks since we got the engine to run. Let's give it some choke. Oh, I don't like this stand I got it on. I should have put it back on the workbench. Sound too bad. That's not bad at all for that just a uh, lawnmower muffler on there. Alright, we never have tested the gears. Uh hey, let's test the lights and stuff. Oh, I don't have a headlight. What happened? Do I have a tail light? No, I don't think so. Bummer. I was so hopeful for the lights to work. Nope. Oh, well. Uh, does the on-off switch work? That works. All right, let me get it down off the table and let's uh, buzz it through some gears and make sure the transmission works. Well, let's see what happens. I still don't see any fuel leaks. I think we got that tank actually sealed up. That's amazing. enjoyed that little series on that bike uh cost you know i used a lot of used parts that i had in my stock the only thing i bought that's brand spanking new was that like two dollar muffler i put on there uh, i put a pod filter on the on the carb that was so I can't remember. Somewhere it's five, ten bucks. Uh, you know, I used a little bit of shrink wrap tube on the cables and so forth. Was there anything else that I actually bought new for it? I reused the handlebar controls and switches. You know, the, the lights were used. I, I'll have to go back through and see what the heck's going on there. I know the bulbs were good because I checked them, but apparently I'm not so sure if my wiring's not good or the stator's not putting out any output. But, uh, 
you know, these little bikes, we need, you don't really need lights on them anyway, but I was trying to make it work. But I love the way the, the exhaust sounds. Uh, I cannot believe we saved that tank. And yeah, it's not pretty, but by golly, we saved it. It's, it's working. I don't, I've not seen a single, there's no drips under it. And this engine doesn't drip any oil either. So anyway, this has been long, this video is long, 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 long enough. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I got a feeling we may bring this bike back in a little bit in a few months. We'll see. But uh, it sure was fun to work on them. It, it's just too small for me to ride. So uh, we may put this bike up for sale at some point. If anybody's interested, let me know. But uh, uh, if you want it as is, the way it just sits here now, let me know. But um, it's not something I'm probably going to keep. Uh, it's just, you know, as you saw in the video, I, I'm just way too big. So anyway, I'm rambling. Guys, thanks. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.